Good morning, it's Monday morning, so it must be time to go live with Carnivore Chat. Couple of things today, I am on a couple of Carnivore Facebook pages, Facebook groups, and one of the questions that's coming up a lot in the women's Carnivore Facebook group is about weight loss on Carnivore. So I'm gonna jump in, and I'm gonna talk about losing weight on Carnivore today, and that's why I'm holding up this can of pink salmon in the picture this morning. So let's talk about carnivore and weight loss. So when I first went carnivore, easy weight loss coming right away. Why was that? So when I started eating carnivore, I'm mostly eating meat and eggs and a little bit of fish and mostly beef actually. Started eating that way and the weight loss is easy. Why is that? For me, it was naturally satisfied hunger just not hungry, naturally eating twice a day, and so the weight starts coming off. But one of the things that I've found, and I quit sugar more than 12 years ago, and then went, car went keto, and then ultimately carnivore, one of the reasons I did it is I kept stepping down my carbohydrates because the more I would step them down, the easier it would be to satisfy my appetite, more well-being, more energy, and all of that. But specifically talking about weight loss stalls and why it slows down on carnivore, I do wanna talk about homeostasis, which is the body's desire to stay the same and stay safe by staying the same. And also dealing with, as we get leaner and leaner and leaner and leaner, weight loss slowing down and also the desire to get super lean. One of the things I think that is happening, because I was an actor in Los Angeles and I did a lot of theater, and I had no problem working in the theater. On stage, costumes, lights, very easy, don't have to be that thin. So we're talking about thinking about weight loss, correct? When I got to Los Angeles and was trying to work more on camera, that's when we start to see this desire to get thinner and thinner. And then I was also reading an article just today about now what has happened with social media and then also with TikTok and different social media apps that allow you to literally change your body at the press of a button. So here's one of the things that's happening is that normal and healthy, definitely since the middle of the 19th century, that has been getting leaner and leaner and leaner and leaner. I want to tell you a quick story about a famous actress, Sarah Bernhardt, who was famous back in the, about 1875 was really when her career started, maybe a little bit later than that. But she was scandalized and scorned for being too thin. She was attacked for being skinny. And so we saw this shift and there was a famous painter Mucha, who didn't just paint, but he also did advertising and he did very famous advertising posters. And he did all of Sarah Bernhardt's images. And what you can see if you study the painter Mucha is the shift in his earlier models being rounder and more full figured and then getting a bit leaner and a little bit more willowy. So what we're dealing with when we're talking about carnivore diet and losing weight and talking about stalls is if you feel like your weight loss is stalled, I want you to consider what is lean for you because what we know is that socially we see this shift to what the aspirational body looks like and it gets leaner and leaner and leaner so going back to sarah bernhardt and this advertising shift this was this first shift in advertising with mucha where we went from this rounder this rounder smoother body into leaner tighter even to skinny as this actress, as Sarah Bernhardt, became the most famous actress in the world and ha as her image became famous. So let's fast forward to right now. What we're dealing with and what we're seeing is new technologies that allow us to change our faces and to change our bodies at the push of a button. So what you may be dealing with as you get leaner on carnivore is you get to that point where this is where carnivore is taking me. This is where my weight is naturally settling. Now, do I want to go farther? Now that's up to you. I mean, certainly when I was more active in the entertainment industry, I did find that there was a particular weight and a particular size that all of a sudden I got more jobs. Now, I am happy and healthy and confident at this weight. That's one of the gifts that carnivore has given me. But consider 
as the carnivore eating strategy naturally brings your weight into a normal healthy range, if you want to take it farther, consider why it is you want to take it farther. That being said, if you are stalled, and I've been stalled before, and maybe you are as well, if you are, there is something that you can do if you're willing and if you want to. I have found that I naturally eat two meals a day on carnivore, and I have found that if I shift my breakfast to wild salmon and eggs, so you don't have to spend a fortune, this is actually pink salmon that's been canned, wild caught, and there's actually, they've got a little website here that you can go to, and it's called tracemycatch.com. So you can actually see if it was wild caught and where it was caught, which I think is kind of interesting. So big can of pink bumblebee sa salmon. This is also very economical. If you want to save, uh, save money on carnivore, this can be an economical choice if you're eating fish. So that's one of my tips for if you're in a fat loss stall, if you're in a weight loss stall, I found that one meal starting that first meal of the day um, with um, eggs and wild salmon can be very helpful. The next thing I wanna check you in on is the carnivore lifestyle. You might be interested in how the hens are doing. So exactly four weeks ago, we got our first hens. We got juvenile hens, so not chicks and not older hens, but they're juvenile hens who hadn't started producing yet. And we've got over a dozen eggs now. So they started laying just about, oh, about, about 10 days ago. Um, and the first eggs were very petite and very cute. And now the eggs are getting larger and larger. So when we got them, they said they would start producing eggs in about four to six weeks. And right around four weeks, they started producing. We have more than a dozen, so the hens are doing really, really well. Uh, we're just feeding them the um, poultry pellets and they get an organic chicken scratch as a treat. And they also get the organic mealworms, actually organic, I don't know if they are. They get mealworms for a treat, so they're getting some carnivore food. And then they also get to go out of their enclosure, so they are ranging free. One of the interesting things about the chickens is their favorite thing to do even when they have their favorite foods inside their enclosure, they love to get out and start pecking and going, going around. So now, talking about, I promised you, a study and a book as well. The study, I have lost my study. It's a Dr. Georgia E. ketogenic diet study. I'll see if I can find it. But I do want to tell you about a book or a PDF. You can actually get the PDF for free, and I will put the link in the notes. And it is Strong Medicine by Blake Donaldson, MD, and you can get the PDF, and there's also a link to the book on Amazon. St Strong Medicine came out in 1960, 1961, and if we think about you know the most famous book on long-term carnivore diet being Not By Bread Alone, this, in my opinion, is an extraordinarily helpful book because this is an MD in 1960-61 who was prescribing a carnivore diet, meat and water and half a cup of coffee to his patients. So here's what the diet looked like. It was uh, three meals a day of eight ounces of meat and half a cup of coffee and of course water. And what it was was a very, very, very low carb diet obviously ketogenic, low carb, and it was basically meat, water, half a cup of coffee. And what it did was, once again, satisfied appetite, improved mood, and he talked about all of these different people he helped to lose weight. And he didn't just help them lose weight. The book is fascinating, the PDF is fascinating. I hope that you will get it and read Strong Medicine by Blake Donaldson, MD, because I think it will give you huge insights into how the carnivore diet works and why it works and what different, what different maladies and disease states it works for. So that's the book of the week. Now we're gonna get into a little practice for the topic that I'm going to do a regular video on this week, and that is adding back fruit. I did a video on adding back vegetables and how it worked for a little bit. I hoped it would work, but pretty soon after I added them back, started to have those negative thoughts again and started to have my big appetite, out of control appetite come back again. Well, now let's talk about fruits. 
I think we've heard a little bit in Carnivore now about things like adding back fruit and adding back honey. Dr. Saladino talks about this. Now, here's what I have discovered. So I did go ahead and add back some of the fruits that have worked for me on a ketogenic diet in the past. So adding back things like Granny Smith apples have already worked, always worked for me. Pears have worked and berries have worked where I've been able to eat them in a moderate amount without my appetite going crazy. So here is what happened. I added back a Granny Smith, one serving of fruit a day. So either a Granny Smith apple or some berries or a pear. On the first day or so, it worked beautifully. I felt great, I was satisfied, no problem. No increase in appetite. Day two, appetite got stronger. A little bit harder to satisfy my appetite. By day three, appetite going out of control and negative thoughts coming. But there's a caveat that I hadn't thought about until just a couple of days ago. I do have the juice of half a lemon, about a tablespoon of lemon juice, and a tablespoon of Bragg's apple cider vinegar every day. So those are fruit foods. Lemon juice would be a fruit food. And then of course, fermented the apple cider vinegar, right? Fermented apples. So we're also, we're having a non-sweetened, a sour fruit juice, and then also the fermented apple cider vinegar. And what I have noticed is that the non-sweet fruits, lemons, limes, avocados, sometimes olives, and even tomatoes don't seem to increase my appetite. Now tomatoes, I will say, I do have a little bit of trouble with if I eat too many of them, possibly because an, uh, a tomato is a nightshade. But the truth is, if we talk about adding back fruits to the carnivore diet, I do have lemon juice and apple cider vinegar. So those are two fruit sourced liquids that are non-sweet that work very well in my car carnivore lifestyle and my carnivore strategy. Also, when I was on a ketogenic diet, I was eating avocados on a regular basis. And I did find that avocados worked well. So here's an idea. So I went ahead and got some avocados and I'm going to test avocados in my eating plan and seeing if I can also add them back safely. One of the main reasons why you may be wondering why I have lemon juice and why I have ACV every day. I have found one of the things I was suffering from before was leg cramps. And when I have my ACV and my lemon juice, I don't experience leg cramps. I'm also thinking adding back some avocado because of the potassium. So what we're getting with the ACV and what we're getting with the lemon juice and the avocado, potassium, magnesium, and of course, vitamin C. Now you may find, and certainly if you read Strong Medicine by Blake Donaldson, MD, you will find that he was basically giving his patients meat and coffee. So no lemon juice and no ACV there, correct? And they did very, very well. And I know that there are a number of people who do their very best when they just leave all the plants out. Somebody once said a while back, I was talking about how I had written Sugar Freedom and it might be time to update it. And they said, yeah, you should call it Plant Freedom because the reality is, is that when I go completely plant free, I'm not eating any plant foods at all. I do really, really well, except for that little bit of an issue with leg cramps, which is why I stick with the lemon juice and the ACV. So I'm also gonna be adding back that avocado. Did you know that the avocado is a fruit? Yes, it's a fruit. So adding back that avocado to talk about fruits on the carnivore diet, because for me, adding back vegetables didn't really work that well. So I'm just going to test those fruits. So ha there you have it, carnivore chat for the day. A little bit of talk about weight loss stalls and trying the wild salmon and eggs for one meal a day to see if that gets the weight loss stall going. And then also sharing strong medicine, the PDF or the book, by Blake Donaldson, MD, and then also letting you know that I am going to be trying a little bit of a carnivore diet, adding back fruits, and making another video on that. All right, thank you for watching, and be well, eat for yourself, and come back here next Monday for another live episode of Carnivore Chat with me, Catherine. Take care.